So we all know that auditioning kicks and claps and snares and hi-hats can be one of the most painful parts of the production process. Going through your files, your folders, trying to find the right sample. Even if you've organized them in a smart way, like with collections, for example, it can still take you a while to find that right sample. But in today's quick tip, I'm gonna show you how to build a device from scratch where you can load all your favorite samples in and audition them instantly. So I'm back again with another one of my quick tips. Every single day this month, a brand new quick tip. And today's one is all about saving you those hours that you spend going through your sample collection, trying to find the right drum hit. Now, what we're gonna be doing today is creating a brand new instrument, a custom device that's custom just for you. We're gonna load in all our one-shot samples, whether it's kicks, claps, snares, hi-hats, whatever you want it to be, and set it up in a way that we can audition these instantly. It is so cool to do. Now, it will take you a little bit of time just to set it up, but it's gonna save you so much time in the long run. So let's jump into Ableton and I'll show you just how simple this is to do. Okay, so to show you how to do this, I've got a very simple Ableton project set up here. Just one single MIDI track, and I've got a MIDI clip on here already, just to save some time. It's just a very simple kick pattern, a 4-4 kick pattern. But obviously nothing's gonna happen at the moment because I've got no instrument on here whatsoever. Now in this example, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create an instrument that allows us to pick between all our favorite kick samples. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load on an Ableton sampler. We're gonna do all of this with the Ableton sampler. And first off, I'm actually gonna open the zone tab. Now this tab, this kind of function within the sampler allows us to map samples to different keys on the keyboard. Now this would be commonly done with a multi-sampled instrument where you'd have multi-samples and load them across the keyboard so it sounded quite nice. And what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna load a whole load of kick samples in here. So I'm gonna jump into my kicks collection. And this is where I've collected all of my favorite kicks that I use all the time. Now, when you come to do this, you only have a maximum of 127 samples that you can put in here. So if you do have a large kit collection, for example, then you might need to strip this back to the ones that you really use all the time. Now, in this example, I'm not gonna waste time by going through and trying to find you know, a whole load that I do like. I'm just gonna select a whole load from here and we're just gonna use it as an example. So I'm gonna drag and drop these into this window down here. So this has loaded all of those samples into the sampler. And next, what we need to do is we need to map these across the keys. Now, the first thing you're gonna do, because this is quite small over here, I'm gonna right click on here and I'm gonna select the medium view for this. It just gives us a bit more room on the right hand side. Now we don't actually wanna map it across the key, we wanna map the select. This is where the magic comes in. So I'm gonna select all of these kick samples. So I'm gonna to go to the very top one, then scroll all the way to the bottom one, hold down shift on my keyboard and select the bottom one. That'll select all of them. And next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to the right hand side here. And I'm just gonna drag this in. So it only takes up the first note within here. So you can see it goes to zero. That's what we wanna do. Now, next up, this is the tedious part. What we gotta do now is move these so they've each got their individual squares. I'll show you what I mean. So the first one is on the first square. And then I'm gonna move down to the next one and I'm gonna move that one place to the right. So this is now on the one selection. So the first one is zero, the next one is one, and then the next one we wanna do is two. Obviously this is gonna take a little while, but there is a shortcut for doing this. So what we can do is we can use our keyboard. So if I hit down on the keyboard, it will go onto the next sample. And then if I hit right on the keyboard, it will move that sample right. So I can go down and press down on the keyboard again, and then right, down, and then right down, then right. Now, obviously this does take a little bit of time to do this, so I'm gonna speed this up right now. So this might take a bit of time depending on how many samples you've got, but believe me, you'll save this time in the long run by being able to select these kicks really quickly and simply. So we've now got all of these occupying their own square on here, and this is where the magic starts to happen. So what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna go to this sampler. I'm gonna right click on it and go to group. This will now make it into its own group, and I'm gonna open up the macros tab. Next up, what we're gonna do is go back to the selection button, and then we're gonna right click on the sample select bar here. And then we're gonna to go to map to macro one. And this now allows us to select through which one we want. So when I play this back, we'll hear the first sample. And then I can simply turn this sample selector and we can select a different kick.
So as you can see from there, it's really easy to pick a different kick from there just by using that simple knob there. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you can have a maximum of 127 samples in there. So when you turn this knob all the way to the top, it goes to 127. Now we don't have 127 samples in here at the moment. If I scroll down, we can see that the very last one in here is 31. So rather than the maximum being 127, we could really do the maximum being 31 because there's really only 32 samples within there that we want to choose between. Luckily, we can actually change this. So I'm just going to hit the map button here, which allows us to further configure this actual macro. So we can see here that the minimum is zero and the maximum is 127. That corresponds with this sample select here from zero to 127. So what I can do is I can click on this max and then just enter 31. And that, then that is our maximum that it's going to go up to. So if I go back out of map, I've now got the sample selector here, and if I turn it all the way to the top, it goes to sample 31. And if I turn it all the way to the bottom, it goes to zero. So as you can see, it makes it very easy to then customize this to your needs, to how many samples you've got in there. So again, we can play this back and then select the kick that we want. Now we also have all of these other empty macros that we can do a whole load of stuff with. So we can actually map some of the other features of the sampler, for example. We might want to map the decay to macro two or the release to macro three and maybe even the sustain in there as well to macro four. So we can easily just change it from here and this will then be able to change that instrument for us and just make it a little bit easier for us to work with. So we could then start playing around with how the kick sounds. And of course we can keep these settings as we go through the different kicks. So as you can see, it's not that hard to set up. The longest part of the process is just loading those samples in and mapping them across the keys. But once you got that set up, really that's the hardest part of it. And when you come to use it next time, it's so quick to audition through all those different samples. Now, because this is your own instrument rack, you could add in extra things on top of it. So you could put a saturator in there, a compressor in there, reverb, delay, whatever you wanted to, and really kind of make it a fully featured rack. It's totally up to you. It's your instrument, it's your device. You can make it however you want to. So definitely give it a try and have a play around, see what you can come up with. And if this video has been useful to you, then definitely subscribe to the channel because as I say, there's a brand new video coming every single day this month. So definitely get subscribed, hit that notification icon so you're notified the moment it's uploaded. And hopefully I'll see you again in the next video.